So I guess the problem is the way we talk about the business. You're going to see a lot of presentations over the next couple of days from some really great people. And they're all going to have uh, a similar theme, namely, here's some stuff you can do, here's some stuff you should do, here's some stuff you must think about going forward because the world is changing. None of it matters unless you understand something really, really simple and fundamental, and that is that the way we think about the very definition of our industry, the box we use, needs to change. We need to change the words we use. As Brian Eno said, where's the edge? Where does the frame start? I submit to you that that edge moves. The frame needs to broaden, and the language we use needs to broaden with it. Where is the frame? Where is the picture? The structure of language determines not only thought but reality itself. In other words, if you talk about the industry a certain way, you're going to be limited to what you're talking about. If we say, well, we're in the radio industry, and the radio industry does blank over the air, that's all you're going to aspire to. We're in the TV industry, and our job is to create TV content. That's all you're going to aspire to. We're in the newspaper industry, and our job is news. That's all you're going to aspire to. It's wrong. It's limiting. By the way, if this is too philosophical, how about this one from Gordon Burrell? If you stop thinking of yourself as a television station, you can get to the next level. What? Stop what? If I don't think of myself as a television or a radio station, what do I think of myself as? Let's use an example from another medium. Let's talk about Apple. Let's talk about the iPod. This is the first, first MP3 player, the iPod, 2001. Changed the world. Changed the way we relate to the music. First ever MP3 player. Changed everything, right? Okay, well, that's a lot. It's not the first MP3 player. Actually, this is the first MP3 player. The Diamond Rio, 1999, not 2001. Two years earlier. What happened in those two years? Q crickets. By the way, even 2001, when the iPod came out, it wasn't the grand, glorious explosion we remember. That took another two years. You know what the difference was in that time? The difference was not iTunes, because that had been there from the beginning. The difference was the iTunes store the iTunes store, because Apple, the company that had the frame that said, we create technology products, had now created a store, in other words, a process, in other words, a system for people to complete the loop, to get their content easily, to get it on a device easily. The extension of the technology was now part of the technology. The store is what led to the explosion of the iPod. That blue circle is when the, iPod, when the iTunes store was released, and you can see within 12 months it had blown up. It was the store, it was the process, it was the system, it was the ecosystem that made the difference. That's how they defined their industry. And, as you probably know, they're doing it again right now with iAd. They're not called Apple Computer anymore. They don't sell just hardware anymore. Now they sell advertising. By the way, when you sell advertising, you're media. You're you. They're competing against you. That's how they define their market. So where is the picture? Where is the frame? How do we extend out to fulfill our opportunities in this world? Here's the advice of Jeff Bezos, head of uh, Amazon. He says there are two ways, and they're both really, really important. First, take inventory of what you're good at and extend out from your skills. Or, determine what your customers need and work backwards, even if it means learning new skills. And by the way, everybody has a hard time learning new skills. It's never been more important than now. So again, think about what you're good at, focus on what you're good at, extend out in new areas. Or, think about what your customers need and work backwards. Here's how Amazon does it themselves. They practice what they preach. Amazon, of course, because they're doing all this stuff online, they have this huge infrastructure and knowledge base and skill set and cost benefit of doing things online. So what do they do? They package it and they put it out for you to buy. You can ride on Amazon's coattails. You can get a little piece of Amazon's prowess on the digital platform through their cloud uh, services, their web services. 
That's their way of extending out what they're good at. This is their way of working backwards. Roll back the clock four years. Would you have expected Amazon under any scenario, under any circumstances, to create a product you can hold in your hands that says Amazon on it that you use every day? Are you kidding me? We never would have expected that. Amazon was a company that sold stuff online. It wasn't a company that created things, right? But their consumers, the people who bought those books, want to read them in more places, want them to be more convenient, want them downloaded on the spot, want to read a bunch of them at a time without carrying a big bundle of things. They solved a problem. They focused on the problem first. They worked backwards, even though they had to learn new skills. So how do we, broadcasters, extend out, number one, and work backwards, number two? How do we do that? Well, it begins with understanding what we're better at than anybody else, what we do well that nobody else does, who we really are fundamentally. 